With Halloween right around the corner, we will be commemorating Spooky Season with possibly the most disturbing version of Spider-Man yet, and that would be the infamous serial killer, Patton Parnell. This one is certainly full of creepy crawlies, so you may want to watch this one with the lights on. Without further ado, grab a plate of Spider-Man deviled eggs, sit back, relax, and enjoy the full gory story of Patton Parnell. Who is he? Patton Parnell is a twisted and violent variant of Peter Parker from the depths of the Marvel Multiverse. He made his first appearance in the pages of Edge of Spider-Verse number 4 back in 2014. He comes from Earth 51412, and while his initial origin is somewhat similar to Peter Parker's, it soon takes a deep turn to the dark side. As mentioned previously, this Spider-Man is actually not named Peter Parker at all, but rather a play on that name called Patton Parnell. While his parents did die when he was very young like Peter, Patton was sent to live with his abusive and absentee Uncle Ted instead of the kind-hearted Uncle Ben and Aunt May that we all know and love. While Peter Parker was the shy yet chill type of dude, Patton was on the far end of the spectrum and was the shy, stalker, serial killer type dude, for he would spy on his neighbor Sarah Jane while she would get dressed and would refer to her as subhuman names such as Test Subject. While spying on her, he would sweatily remark that he wished to steal clothes from her room for scientific purposes. Yeah, you know those weird dudes that you come across on the internet that we all think need to get outside and touch grass? This guy, he needs to touch all the grass. In fact, he needs to become the grass and just leave us all alone. The following morning, Patton and his classmates headed on a field trip to Alcor Industries, which is this world's version of Oscorp. Surprisingly, pervy Patton was approached by Sarah Jane, who somehow thought he was a good person, and asked for his help in exposing Alcor for their inhumane animal experimentation. Being the creepy simp that he was, Patton agreed, and when the pair got into the facility, they snuck into one of the labs where they attempted to free some of the caged animals. Reaching into a jar to free a spider, we all know what would happen next as Parnell was bitten by the irradiated arachnid. The teens then mistakenly set off an alarm where they were caught by building security. In trouble for the amount of damage they caused, Sarah Jane apologized and put herself at blame, saying that she put Patton up to all this all while Parnell could do was internally remark on the strange burning sensation coming from his hand. God, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Just be a man and sleep it off like Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and you'll be alright man. That is just what Patton did however, and instead of waking up with a sweet six pack, he discovered bizarre web-like fluid had formed between each of his fingers. Patton then heard a loud banging at his door, which was an enraged Uncle Ted who was upset at the kid for not opening his room right away. He then claimed that the boy was nuts and should have never agreed to becoming his guardian and proceeded to give him his own form of mental rehabilitation by beating him with a belt, all while Sarah Jane next door overheard the commotion and cried for her friend. Uh, never said this video would be a fun one, guys. You may, uh, you may want to watch some fun videos after this. Uh, oh, Here's Deadpool dancing for a few seconds. Feel better? Okay, moving on. Later that day, the effect of the spider bite began seriously impacting Patton's physiology. He developed an insatiable appetite, one so bizarre that it even drove him to eat a fresh live mouse that they had caught in a trap. Blood dripping from his freshly sharpened teeth, Patton enjoyed his meal and desired more. He even attempted to eat his cat, which luckily scratched him and got away. However, in the commotion, Patton discovered that he could shoot organic webs from his wrists. Sadly webbing up the cat and other items in his room, the psycho Spider-Man was delighted at his newfound power. Later that night, a typically angry Uncle Ted came home expecting a hot dinner to have been prepared by Parnell. Much to his horror, 
Ted discovered the webbed creatures all over the house and was greeted by the sinister voice of his nephew, who announced that he, in fact, was the main course for tonight's dinner. Developing demonic red eyes and enlarged sharpened fangs, Patton lunged at his uncle, who screamed in terror. With no regrets for his actions, this new Sigma male Spider-Man whistled his way to school while wearing a fresh pair of shades to hide his transformed eyes. Seeing his peers as nothing but herded cattle, Patton contemplated on who his next victim would be. To hold him over though, he would save money by bringing a packed lunch, which consisted of live birds webbed in his locker. Before he could suck into a snack like a Capri Sun, Parnell was met by the high school bully Gene, who was up to stereotypical high school bully stuff. With his newfound confidence, however, Patton challenged the dude to a private fight in the school locker room during lunch. And, as you can imagine, things would not end well for poor Gene. The bodies would begin to stack up, as Parnell would then come across a local kid who was looking for his missing dog. Telling the sad boy that he knew where the pooch was, Patton lured the child to his home where he became next on the menu. Later that night, Patton heard a knock on his door, which was Sarah Jane, asking him if he knew where Jean was. Confronting Sarah about what she saw in guys like Jean, Sarah's interest was piqued in Parnell's newfound confidence, where he pulled the boldest Sigma move ever by actually kissing a girl that he liked. However, he'd quickly go from Sigma back to Psycho as he bit the poor girl right on the neck, where she screamed out in pain. Revealing his glowing red eyes and fangs to the girl, she promptly responded by scratching the dude, telling him to get away. The strike would reveal a pitch black second set of spider-like eyes on Parnell's head, where his skin then ripped off, revealing a new mutated spider-like monster form. Attempting to book it out of this house of horrors, Sarah Jane would mistakenly run into Patton's room, which consisted of his deceased victims hanging from the ceiling, as well as a near-death Uncle Ted, who begged for her to help him. In the most creepy monster movie-like way, Patton revealed to Sarah that he loved her and wanted her to carry on his offspring. He then revealed that he was a carrier, where we see Uncle Ted give birth to thousands of baby spiders who came crawling out of his skin. Guys, I am so sorry for anyone who may have developed newfound arachnophobia after watching this. Uh, here's Deadpool dancing again. Is he helping? Uh, no? Oh well, I've done all I can do. As he closed in on Sarah, Patton was then met by the vampiric multiverse spider hunter himself, Morloon. Not cool about getting his dinner date interrupted, Patton went to attack Morloon, only to get immediately owned by the vampire, who was delighted to have such a fresh spider snack. He then began to rip each of Patton's arms off, as a completely mortified Sarah Jane ran out of the house. Beating his jaw right off his body, Morloon then grabbed Patton and sucked out his life force, ending the life of the cannibal Spider-Man. Swearing to herself that this was all a dream, Sarah then ran away where she got home safe. The next morning, she still tried to convince herself that she only imagined everything, only to notice that the bite Patton gave her was still there, where it began to swell up and burst, giving birth to thousands of tiny spiders that climbed all over her face. 